Dr. Reiser, Dr. Doug Marco, thank you very much for your kind invitation to be part of this imaging course you in 2021, you read in a virtual meeting. Before getting into the question that you propose for this talk, let me first consider this one. What should be new in OCT imaging? Unfortunately, most countries like a protocolized training for residents and fellows, as well as continuing medical education for physicians or permanent updates for regional physicians. Obviously, there is no official requirement or certification in terms of OCT interpretation. I, I think we really need to move forward and consider this as a must in the near future, given the high relevance of an accurate OCT interpretation. So these are my financial disclosures and obviously the one I really need to disclose is the investment that I had to consider with these two charming and smart doctors so that they could include me in this outstanding course. So, Given the introduction that I just uh, presented, I would like to share some typical and frequent misdiagnoses in structural OCT that we currently still receive in our daily practice. For example, these kind of structures. These are not exudative signs. These, do, these don't constitute serious PEDs. These represent soft trusen, special soft trusen, described as calcified nodules or hyperreflective trusen correlating with the original description by the group of Yuseka Quercus. The phenotyping classification of the trusen type is highly relevant it might be easy to identify these subretinal drusenal deposits, but it's not that easy to recognize these as subretinal drusenal deposits, given the progressive staging described years ago by Zweifel and co workers in this Hallmark publication. Recognizing the type of deposit present in a certain case of AMD is as relevant as shown that by Sara and co-workers in this proposal for a scoring system of risk of progression in age-related macular degeneration. And depending on the presence of this hyperreflective drusen, interretinal hyperreflective foci, subretinal drusen deposits, and the drusen volume, they categorize four different stages, categories, with this extremely different risk for progression for advanced AMD. So it's extremely important to recognize the structural features in patients with AMD. Also, the two leading causes of misdiagnosis of neovascular AMD are drusenoid PEDs on the left acquired by telephone lesions on the right. This can lead to some kind of doubt about the presence of a fibrovascular PED or subretinal fluid. But again, OCT imaging is key in the differentiation of these particular deposits as opposite to neovascular AMD. It is also frequent to find confusion or misdiagnosis between this image and this other image. To the left, we can see the typical appearance of a patient with paracentral acute middle maculopathy PAM. To the right, the typical OCT appearance of a case 
of acute macular ne neuroretinopathy, AMN. It's impossible to talk about these entities without making reference to Dr. David Saraf's work. And here we can see two examples of publications illustrating the difference between them, the impacts of making an accurate differentiation, and how important it is to recognize the structural features in OCT imaging in order to identify correctly the disease that a patient is presenting. It's also very frequent to receive patients with the diagnosis, presumed diagnosis of CSC, like this. You can see the tilted disc, you can see the abnormal contour of the posterior wall of the eye and the presence of some retinal fluid. These cases with tilted disc and serious macular detachment in a configuration similar to dome-shaped macula are the most frequently cases misdiagnosed as central serious choroidopathy and obviously they have nothing to do with the pathology or the therapeutic approaches to that disease. And finally, we might not want to include these cases as neovascular AMD. We can clearly see the typical features of pachychoroid with an overlying shallow irregular RP elevation in the context of pachychoroid neovasculopathy. These patients behave differently than those with neovascular AMD, and therefore it's important to rule out the presence of pachychoroid neovasculopathy in a patient with exudative manifestations within the age of AMD. There are some promising improvements in OCT devices, but all of them are far, poorly far, for being ready for prime time in our routine practice. So I would like to share with you some beautiful, wonderful images obtained with high-resolution OCT by Dr. Dolph Marco from the Espectralis device. The level of detail that we can obtain with this device is extremely better than the, what we are used to. And for example, you can identify hella fibula layers, an outer nuclear layer, different and perfectly delineated in the boundaries, as well as all the hyperreflective spaces of the outer retina. So here you can see an example of how differently we can approach in terms of a structural analysis, an OCT image with this new high-resolution OCT device. It seems clear the relevance that this might have and the impacts on new therapies in macular atrophy, where we can analyze with high level of detail the structural changes that are taking place. So that's all for me at this point. I would like to fondly thank the organizers very much for the kind invitation and I'm happy to take any questions and go for, a, for an intense discussion. Thank you very much.